Hi, welcome everyone. Today I'm going to quickly demo um, how to do the k-means and hierarchical clustering using R. So as all of you know probably, k-means, uh, to begin with k-means, we need to pick the number of clusters which is fixed as, uh, before we start. So let's get started. First I'm going to generate a, create a seed value. Let's create a matrix X with some random data. Uh, normalized data roots say 50 values and spread across two columns okay uh, 50 values in each column so we're going to generate 100 values but spread across two columns, so that will be 50 values in each. Um, so as you can see over here, I just did a quick view or the head section of the what is an X. As you can see, some random values here. Um, now what we're going to do is we're going to, uh, in order to prove that uh, clustering works, let's uh, shift the first 25 observations uh, to have a slight shift in the mean. So what we're going to do for that is I'm going to take the first 25 elements in the first column. So this refers to that. So you're taking 1 to 25 in the first column. And I'm going to shift them and equal them to be the same values in the first column plus 3. Okay, So I'm just shifting them a little bit here. And similarly, I will do that for the second, the y values in the for the same um, same 25. So y values would be referred by the second column. I'm going to shift that by let's say negative four. So now I do have my x ready. So I'm going to call k means using the k means function in R. So let's say k means that out equals k means. This is how you invoke the k-means function. You pass the data set and uh, the number of clusters you want and an, an, an initiation called n start equal to 2. What n start indicates is like how many, um, how many times to run the algorithm. It's better to have n start to be greater than 1 so that uh, the output is not uh, biased and it's a true minimum or a true local minimum. So now we have the thing. Let's let's look at the cluster values in k, km dot out by looking at its cluster cluster column. This should tell us that, as we expected, the first twenty five values got clustered into uh, together, and the last. Uh, 25 got clustered together because we did manipulate the data such that the first 25 were sort of different in relation to the mean. So with that being said, um, so now we have the clusters, right? So now we can plot these clusters to make it a little bit more visualizable. So you do plot x and then values here we say km dot out dollar cluster okay and then you say give it a title and then let's say we want to Okay, now, oops. I'm missing the equal sign here. So this is plotting the data. As you can see, all the 50 points are plotted and as two different clusters. Yeah, so in the example I just showed you, we really knew that there were two clusters because we generated the data and we manipulated it. 
However, in real life or in real data, in general, we do not know the true number of clusters. So we could instead have performed this k means clustering on this same example using k equal to 3. And obviously, if you did that, you would get a different result. So it would basically split up these two clusters into three. Um, so that is, in a nutshell, clay means clustering. Let's look at hierarchical clustering for a minute now. So in hierarchical clustering, remember, hierarchical clustering is agglomerative, which means that when you start hierarchical clustering, you don't start by like you do for k means by number of clusters. You don't specify the clusters. In, in hierarchical clustering, every value initially is treated as its own cluster, and then you merge, merge them, and at the end, you have a big mass of cluster. So, but when you basically start, if you have 50, 50 values, you'll be having 50 clusters. And then based on a certain distance or Euclidean distance, you merge them, and then you decide at which point you want to cut off. The output of a hierarchical clustering is a dendrogram. So you can look at the dendrogram, and you can cut the dendrogram at the desired level of clustering that you prefer. So let's do an example of um, hierarchical clustering. It's very simple to do hierarchical clustering in R. So let's start um, with the same data set. Let's do, let's try calling that. So in hierarchical clustering, the main thing is how do you, what is the distance between, how do you calculate the distance between the nodes? Like what is the measurement, uh, what type of measurement should you use between each clusters? So there are three ways for that. There's something called complete, single, and average. What this means is when you measure the distance between two clusters, and if there are five points, say there are five points in the first cluster and there are two points in the second cluster, in a complete analysis or a complete linkage analysis, what you will do is you, between those two clusters, you tend, you pick up the further, the points that are the furthest. And that denotes the distance between the clusters. Versus in a single, you pick the points that are the closest between the clusters. Um, so let's start with a complete, and uh, we'll also do an example of single, and, and the other one, which is average. So, but uh, uh, the input of a hierarchical clustering is actually the distance matrix, or what's known as the dissimilarity matrix. So you pass that, and then there, and there is a parameter called variable, um, variable called method, which is where you say whether you want complete or so now let's say we did this for different values. Let's say we did it for single. So in single, let's store that output in a variable called hc.single. Right now, let's compare and plot those values. Right, so if we were to plot, um, if we were to plot this, And the data set obviously changes here. The data we want to provide is the output of that stored in hc.complete. Um, let's see. So we have hc.complete. We have main. I'm oh, sorry. We don't need these variables. So this is, as you can see, this is the output of our um, hierarchical clustering using complete analysis, or uh, using the complete linkage. And you could also do the same thing using the output that we just stored in the same linkage. So 
So this is in the single, um, the difference between single linkage, a single linkage is isolated and, and it's not cohesive, whereas complete linkage is usually not isolated, but it is cohesive. Um, so hierarchical clustering in this, like I said before, um, the number of clusters is in fix, the hierarchy of the nested cluster versus so, but the issue with hierarchical clustering is that um, sometimes the parameters or the predictors are not really hierarchically, hierarchically nested. So, for example, if you have parameters that are like nationality and gender, it's not true that there is a hierarchy between gender and nationality. It doesn't have anything, any relationship. So, in those cases, hierarchical clustering may not be applicable. Um, average linkage. It provides more compact clusters. Average link linkage is actually a mix and match between co complete and single. It's kind of an in-between approach. Uh, the single linkage actually does suffer from one downside, which is the fact that it has uh, the chaining phenomenon. Since you are taking um, the two closest points between each clusters, you might end up um, end up merging clusters that are on two different ends but are just look, uh, are just linked by a slight few points in between that link them, a single line of points that link them. So uh, a dumbbell would be a good example, a structure that's uh, um, po points that are, um, that are spread across as a dumbbell, you might end up linking them and clustering into one instead of thinking of the left side of the dumbbell as one cluster and the right side as one cluster. Um, hope you enjoyed the session. I will be talking more about um, clustering and other statistical learning techniques in my next video. Thank you.